Alright, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you saw my last video, which was me printing my first print ever on the printer. Uh, I did print out a little calibration cube, and it was a... I think I had too much flow or not enough heat or too much heat or something, so... Uh, it was pretty much bone stock settings. Uh, I'm ready to put on a heated bed so I can stop playing games with a hot uh, heat gun to heat up the bed manually. Um, I don't. I think if you don't want a heated bed, you can go for the uh, ABS juice they call it, which is some sort of dissolved ABS. You can potentially uh, use certain types of hairspray and things like that. So I don't really want to make a mess in here. Uh, if I was down in the garage, I wouldn't mind doing that. But I already had this heated bed. I provisioned for it early on because uh, you pretty much needed to do ABS uh, plastic. So. I noticed online, this is the one from Cubed. Anyway, it's a pretty good bed and the price was right, it was like 20 bucks. So uh, this is made for uh, 24 volt, I wanna say. So I'm a little worried this might be the thing that makes me uh, go for 24 volt. If you remember from my other videos, 24 volt on this thing makes quite a bit of servo or stepper noise that I can kind of tune out if I change the, the voltage down to 12 or somewhere in between. But 12 is probably what I'm gonna go with. This guy will do a certain amount of wattage. I can't remember exactly what it is. I want to say it's 300 watts uh, on 24 volts. So I'll get half of that on uh, 12 volts. And if that's too slow for me or if I can't make the temperature that I want, then uh, I can luckily power it separately um, and still get control with the board. So that's a pretty nice feature. The multiple su power supplies on the Aztec X3 Pro is... I can run, I forget what else it's grouped with, it might be the hot end, but um, either way I can run this at a, at a higher voltage than the motor, so, or a completely separate split supply, so that's kind of a nice feature. Okay, so one thing I noticed when uh, I was buying this is that it's a little bit wonky where all this stuff comes in, so this nice silicone high temp cable. Uh, comes in and it goes into sort of a blob and then it breaks out here and then in there somewhere there's a uh, thermistor as well embedded which is pretty cool actually it's already all done for me and everything I don't have to try to rig one in but what that means is that this height difference here is going to cause me a problem if I just lay it down here and try to put glass on top so I have this piece of glass it's actually picture frame glass so there is a possibility that's going to explode and crack and break so we'll see how that goes, I'm not real sure, but um, I will put some borosilicate glass on here. I just haven't ordered any yet, and I don't know. I'm going to give it a go with this and see if it holds up. Uh, this just showed up in the closet one day. I don't know what it's from or what it is, really, but the size is right, and it's in hand, so I'm going to try it and see how it goes. Um, so one of the problems, obviously, is that height difference here. This is going to have to uh, be raised up. So. I thought about milling into this and doing a nice profile. I've seen some people 3D print them and things like that, so I didn't really want to do any of that. And I was reading some people are using cardboard as insulators. So I got some cardboard here, uh, diaper box. And I'm going to put this guy on. I'm going to cut out some uh, inserts here and make sure he sits nice and flat. Once he does, I'll be able to put that um, glass right on top and clamp it. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut these up and fit them. I also have so over there somewhere some high temp exhaust tape that I'm going to tape actually uh, between the hotbed and where it sits. So it'll be like here. And that should help also insulate and keep the temperature off of this cardboard. Although this should be good to 400 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which I'm not sure exactly what that is in Celsius. But um, it should be good. A lot of people are using it. It sounds like, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put another layer of insulation on there. So hopefully the heat will go up uh, with that insulation installed. So I'm going to jump into uh, what I've been calling high speed mode, which is actually time lapse mode. But uh, I'm going to go super fast and knock all this out. Um, this is my cut piece that I screwed up. Uh, I cut the holes funny. Even though I had a template, I messed it up in CAD and translated it all the way, but set it on the printer and realized it was wrong. But it's a good size and I can work without unmounting this one. Um, so it is all going to go on this other bed. At one point I had planned to use this and put it on top of there and kind of save this bed. But this bed I did kind of a crappy job on anyway. So I may see what I can do about doing another one. Or I may want it in aluminum someday. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Anyway. Getting into it, uh, I'm going to make this heated bed, then i got to wire it up, and then we'll heat it up, and hopefully I'll be able to print some more.
going to be actually I ended up not being able to use this because it made it just a little too thick and I couldn't get my big binder clips on without it uh, really putting a lot of force on the glass and I was afraid as soon as I heated it up it was just gonna like explode still a little bit concerned about that these things grip pretty darn well so um, it's kind of good that they're held in place real well but I don't know about this glass I may want to grab some safety glasses to uh, to fire this thing up for the first time so anyway I'm about to heat it up um, you might have noticed if uh, depending on the speed I run that at I put in some more of this flexi sensor cable it's real uh, thin thin gauge there's three conductors in there some of it has four uh, so I can't run my heater off of that but it the actual thermistor had this little tiny uh, it is stranded I didn't think it was until I actually stripped some of it but it is stranded cable. It's a pain to strip, but um, it's that kind of like you bend it and it just stays. So I think that's not going to last very long when it's moving around. So hopefully I'll get some cable track uh, to run those wires in to tidy them up a little bit and make sure that their path is constrained and not going to rip stuff apart while it's moving. That's one of the uh, detriments to this design for sure is that um, your heated bed actually moves. So I mean, a lot of this junk I had to do to try to level it and get it good, um, you could have done a lot easier if your bed was static all the time and never moved. So you don't have to worry about those wires if your bed doesn't move. But anyway, I think it's good. It runs pretty well. Um, it uh, It's ready to heat up, so I got it hooked into my Aztec at the end of that time lapse. and. Uh, wired in it's connectorized now and everything so uh, if I want to pull it off I can just disconnect it and I have to get a screwdriver and all that stuff so uh, I'm gonna heat it up and try another print see how it goes okay so I'm back up and running I've got repeater host open again we're gonna try to heat up the bed uh, I got this temp sensor bed defined here uh, pretty much the same stuff here in uh, Marlin that we did on the heated or the hot end um, Minimum temp, maximum temp, uh, stuff like that. It looks like, uh, let's see, here's the uh, PID constants for that as well. So uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to set this. I'm going to send it to the uh, Azteague again and get ready to try to print again with the uh, bed at about 60 degrees. Alright, 
so I left the system at 12 volts the whole time and uh, you can see they're running this 24 volt heater on 12 volts is really not the ideal situation um, some of this glass is still like almost cool to the touch like all the way at the corners it's kind of strange because right you can just feel it going up and up and up and up as it gets towards the center so the center is pretty darn hot um, it's at hopefully 60 or somewhere close to that uh, my actual temperature gun wasn't working on me last time I tried to use it so uh, I'm just gonna have to trust that the thermistor value is somewhat close to what the glass is gonna see and just trial and error and see what I need to set it at it doesn't really matter if it's accurate or not as long as I know that where I need to set it so um, I'm gonna let this kinda soak in and therm you know spread out a little bit uh, through the rest of the glass to make sure that it's uh, good to go I just homed everything, so it should be should be happy. Uh, check the last video if you wanted to see how I homed it. Um, I have just freshly uh, made some G code here, so it should now know about my heated bed. I've got it 60 millimeters um, temperature at 200. Still, I don't want to change anything from the last cube because the main value I'm changing here, aside from the heated bed, is I've knocked the flow down a bit. Uh, and I've also changed layer height just so it, it'll print a little bit faster. Um, so we'll see how that cube comes out this time. I'm trying to just change one variable at a time so I know exactly how things are going to affect it. And uh, I need to learn this sort of stuff because I don't really know how it all works yet. So uh, anyway, I've got that posted out to G-Code. It looks like the bed's holding pretty well. It's oscillating a little bit. So uh, I probably need to run the auto-tune, this is just stock gains, but it's getting hot, and I think I just need that first layer to stick, and I should be good, I think, so, um, anyway, I'm gonna get hit this, hit go on this one, and, uh, see how it goes. Okay, so I've had some trouble with homing with G92, I've got it moved to the back now, thinking maybe this, uh, axis may need inverted or something, I've only printed that cube, so I couldn't tell if it was backwards, I need to give that some more thought. Uh, the bed's supposedly heating up right now, but it's having trouble um, getting quite to 60, so I'm going to crank the voltage a little bit. Give it just a little bit more. I haven't run this hot end uh, fan at 24 volts, and I don't think you'd like it, so uh, I'm at about 14 now. So the bed's at temp, the hot end's at temp, it should go. All right, that homing looks a lot better now. So hopefully some PLA will start coming out here pretty soon. There we go. So I think that's the skirt still. Looks like I'm gonna need some more heat on the bed. 60 is not sticking so good. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this and uh, try again. Alright, seems like it's sticking a little bit better. Pull some. Still got the filament feeding out of the box there, so. Get an awful noise off the Z motors. It seems like, depending on where they stop with the micro stepping, they sound horrible, so. Hopefully, I'll single step those. I think they're on half stepping right now, but that sound a little bit better then. I think I can tweak the voltage. Let's see if I can. A little better. Uh, it's back to 12 and a half volts. They're sounding better, but it's a little gnarly. But it did it did seem like it stuck that time. So. Oh no! It, it peeled. So definitely hotter was better that time though. I, yeah, it's gonna peel all the shit now. And I seem to lose my home every time. I don't understand that, so I'll try again another day. <laughs> 